Hello and welcome back to The Founder. I'm Tasha Sejal and we're here with two new guests. I have the founders of Isle of Raqqa, Nilusha and Hishani. How are you guys doing? We're good. good. How are you? Please tell me about you guys. All right, so I'm Nilusha and I work in media and I am someone who comes from a very a very financial background despite working in media. <laughs> and now we have moved into a, a startup with Isle of Raqqa. So. Yeah, so I'm Heshani, and um, basically Isle of Rata started during COVID time. Uh, previously, I was actually working in the public sector, and I was heading an organization called the National Craft Council, which works with all the uh, craftsmen around the country. But during COVID, uh, we had uh, all these artisans reaching out to us uh, to kind of help them find um, a livelihood because their livelihoods came to zero. And um, that's how basically Isle of Rata was born. Um, Nilusha, who's in media, um, and me, who has been working in the traditional craft sector, kind of got together and found a way to um, get basically the local artisans um, a place in the Sri Lankan online marketplace. Exactly, because a lot of things, um if we talk about how, one of the goals of Isle of Rata, it's the fact that there are so many artisans in this country. There's about 56,000 artisans in this mm -hmm. country. And there are, a lot of them are based in a rural environment. They don't have the facilities to even sell their product to a Sri Lankan market. And these artisans uh, catered mainly to the tourist market. If you look at everything they did was to the tourist market. And when COVID-19 happened, of course, tourism came to a halt. All these artisans lost their livelihoods. They had no idea who they're gonna sell their goods to. And so they got in touch with Heshani actually because of her background in the public sector. And that's when we came together and we thought, hey, why don't we take what they do? We turn it into a more functional daily use product. And then we sell it to the urban market of Sri Lanka because uh, we have a lot. We have a big urban market in Colombo itself. If you just take this particular city, and a lot of the time we tend to buy stuff that are made overseas. All these imported like uh, products that are quite very affordable. And at the same time, we tend to think like anything that's made in Sri Lanka, that's handmade, tends to be extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. So with Isle of Rata, we wanted to bring that affordable factor in, but at the same time, keep the whole made in Sri Lanka factor and give these people also something that they can work with and a new a new function to what they have always been doing. Right. So let's start with the name. Okay, mm -hmm. Isle of Rata, how did that even come about? Oh, that came up and about... And what does it mean? Yeah. Uh, that came about on uh, one fine day over coffee. <laughs> I think we were sitting, we were brainstorming for two hours on a particular name. We wanted something that embodies Sri Lanka. We wanted something that ha that really spoke about the products we did and also spoke about the artisans we worked with. Um, Isle is, of course, island. And Rata is the plural of Ratava, which is pattern. So every artisan, they have a certain pattern mm -hmm. when they work, whether it comes to weaving, whether it comes to batik, anything they do, there's a pattern that they follow. So right. we thought of incorporating that in our name. If you look at our logo, we have um, English, Sinhalese, and Tamil in our logo because we want to incorporate like the three main languages that are spoken in Sri Lanka as mm -hmm. well and something that is completely Sri Lankan. Right, uh, um, obviously, you know, I'm assuming this took a lot of planning and thought process, right? So obviously something like this probably won't come overnight. So what was that process like? Um, that was a long process. It that was, was mm -hmm. but I think even previously, Nilusha and I have been working okay. together um, on various craft projects. Um, like, um, as I said, like she was in media and then she used to come on board uh, with the public sector as well uh, to kind of uh, do different projects. So we kind of knew about the sector and what works and what doesn't work. And of course, you know, during a lockdown, how do we market? How do we get to the artisans? Um, it, it was quite a tedious task, uh, even coming up with new designs. So it had a lot of R&D on our parts. Right. and we have never been involved in design. Yeah. Um, but we, like in the middle of a lockdown, you can't go uh, and meet designers um, as well. 
So it 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 was quite a process. It was, it was a process because yeah. a lot of the things that I do was over the phone, right? Yeah. right? And so early I told you about how some of these artisans, they are from rural areas, they don't have access to technology. Some of them don't even have WhatsApp, right? So even no. if we have like a design in mind, we couldn't even send them a WhatsApp. Yeah. They would have to go to their neighbor. They'd have to mm. go to their relation who had oh, like wow. a smartphone to get in touch with us. So yeah. we'd have to, um, they'd give us a certain number and we'd send to that and we'd have to wait like a day to get a reply oh from them goodness. so we had a lot of that but we worked I mean it was and it was also during lockdown right we were doing all this so it's not like they could leave the house and they could go to exactly. someone else's house too so they had to wait for lockdown to get lifted in that area to be able oh to to mm -hmm. even be able to send us samples of yeah. what we had in mind so it did take a while. You guys have been through some challenges, huh? That's actually bringing to my next question. I was going to ask you what was the hardest challenge in I all think, of this. Yeah, communication. Like yeah. I told you, just initially, just getting our ideas across to them, it was um, it was and hard also because also sometimes yeah. um, the idea what we have is not practical. So we have to go to the workshop, sit with the artisan, and see what is practical. Right. And we've learned so much yeah. uh, just about the craft side and even about the techniques. So some artisans are able to do certain techniques, let's say even batik. Mm -hmm. um, now I think when we see um, a certain design, we know oh, it's this artisan or that art right. artisan just right. by the technique. It's so yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so it has been, I mean, about communication both ways. I think even for the artisan kind of to tell us okay, what is practical, what can and cannot be done. Um, but I think this has kind of opened their eyes as well of what is possible. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's really sweet. Yeah, because yeah. like Milusha said, like if you look at batik, it has mainly been into fashion. Right. Um, and we brought it into like a, you know, utility-based item for tableware and different uh, things. And they were also like, oh, wow, this is actually possible. And um, from pottery to ceramic to palmyra, uh, biralu. Yeah, biralu. Yeah. We so, have so many. We've incorporated so many things in just daily, regular homeware, which you can just use every single day, which they never had because they think like ornamental piece. They think yeah. um, uh, batik, biralu. They think fashion items. They yeah. think like, oh, one like centerpiece, which is like really expensive. And they don't think functional use out of it and like you know when you can use it in a functional daily uh, environment then more people are more inclined to actually buy products on them and know and also it's extremely good quality products because right. it's all made in Sri Lanka yeah. it's all handmade it's extremely good quality durable products as well so right and you're giving a lot of people opportunities as well that's just amazing that you guys are doing that uh, now speaking about getting your products out there what's the marketing strategy that you rely on we rely heavily on social media, especially in a day and age like this. Social media is extremely heavy. And because of lockdown, it's not like we could physically go out and open a store. And we, one of our main things is we wanted to make it extremely affordable to our customers. We wanted them to realize, okay, this is really good. It's also at a very good price point. And if we started a store and all, I think the price point would have just like increased exponentially. So we kept it social media. We uh, marketed completely on social media and we kept our prices affordable. And I think that our unique selling point is our price point. Right. Because people come, they realize, oh wow, like, you know, getting batik serviettes from you, getting batik the tableware or beautiful tableware, even Palmyra is just extremely affordable unlike if we if they go somewhere to a physical store and get it and i think we also had a few events mm -hmm. um, after lockdown um, one was rata shack where yes. we co collaborated um, with the sugar shack and um, that was also quite a great event where people could come and see and feel and touch the product because like the old school um, consumers the, you know yeah. they, they're a bit worried sure. and reluctant to buy it online and also what was great was we were able to show, um, demonstrate. So we, we had demonstrations there okay. and they were able to see the effort that goes into making these products. Oh, wow. yes. And uh, definitely be interested in like something like that. Absolutely. Really cool. And then later on we had some training programs as well. Yeah. Um, one was in uh, Noorelia where it was more to give more um, like employment opportunities to women of the upcountry. But the other one that we had in Colombo was again to kind of like get the feel 
of the craft mm -hmm. and I think after our batik workshop yes. um, the ladies were like okay we are never going to bargain on batik ever again like this is so tough um, so like that just like we rely heavily on social media we try to have events um, you know when we can and when it's safe mm -hmm. uh, just to get the story of the craft out there and yeah. that has really helped as well one of our main things like Kesh said is right. getting the story out there making sure that people realize get to know the people behind the product it's not just the product per se it's like the person who's making it who who is this person how long have they been making it and also the process that goes into making it because you think oh this is too much for this particular product but when you see the time that goes into it the raw materials exactly. the effort yeah. and it's completely handmade by these people then you realize oh wait this is actually worth the price or am I yeah. paying too little, little for this yeah. as well yeah. so yeah because the time as well right? yeah. absolutely yeah. now speaking of people uh, before we move any forward let's give a big shout out going out to the Colombo Cooperative who's made all of this possible our venue sponsor and uh, you know they're all about creating modern workspaces for companies of all sizes uh, they would like to know what your what community really means to you and how you build it I Love Rata is all about community we are all about um, our artisans who work with us and also our customers who we have the pleasure of serving as well we want to make sure our customers are extremely happy with the product that they get they are part of our community and also that our artisans feel like you know they're getting a fair price for the work that they do and they are they are a massive part of our community we want to make sure that you know for them that they have a livelihood that they know okay um, this is part of their future so community is extremely important for us we are, we are built on a community right. a community Absolutely. of artisans so, yeah and what would you say up to now it's been like almost a year right coming in coming in for a year <laughs> July 27 uh, 2020 yeah. is when we started yeah differ from uh, each of you but what is your definition of success Oh, you want us to take it individually yeah. up to you guys yeah. you go first hey. <laughs> okay so for me I think and part of what Isle of Rata is bringing um, Sri Lankan crafts um, uh, to the forefront and kind of showing it to the modern world and saying that no it's not just a traditional outdated thing we can use it on a daily um, um, in our daily lives and also having a place for the artisans to there are lots of stories behind um, these crafts yeah. each uh, craft sector so there is um, 21 main sectors that are considered traditional handicrafts okay. in Sri Lanka and each one has a different history uh, a different story and a different community um, for example like the Palmyra is mainly in the northern sector and um, something very similar to it is called Talipot which is in like the northwestern and western areas of Sri Lanka so each um, um, each craft has a different story and a different community and if we can give a place to those communities in the modern uh, commerce world mm -hmm. I think that's that's a success story for uh, Isle of Rata yeah. um, and I think, uh, well, I'll, I'll go on that I'll go on that <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm with her on that. <laughs> okay. I couldn't say it any better yeah. So, yeah. Okay. yeah I understand now you guys are your own boss would you ever work for someone else I do work for someone okay. else. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> this is, uh, we have our other jobs as well. Right. So the Isle of Rata is not the sole job we have, but we do have our other jobs. And uh, it's, I guess I can't answer that question. Right. We, we, right. Yeah, I mean, but you it's, could answer it's, it. It's good. Um, I mean, being your own boss. Yeah. But I think like, um, like when I was working in the public sector, uh, I realized like, having a boss and then working with different teams like it's very structured right, right? Um, and that is also good like it brings in mm -hmm. a lot of discipline, discipline. Yeah. Um, in and then you learn so much about administration and things whereas when it's your own thing you kind of can like uh, yes, get sidetracked and that, like that. I, I like the, you can get sidetracked on one yeah, point, yeah. but one thing that I like about it is that we don't have to ask someone else, oh, so is this okay? Yes. <laughs> we can, yeah, uh, please approve. We don't have to send an Absolutely. email saying please approve or like any of Absolutely. that. You just approve it yourself. And then, and usually it's just a chat between the both of us, yeah. like, yeah. you know, yeah. and we are usually like 90% of the time on the same page for 
of ninety five percent of the time. Yeah, <laughs> same page on everything. We have a few like disagreements, but like it's not too it's bad. Not yeah, yeah. It's yeah. exactly, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like uh, it's not like we like when you work for someone else, you have to really sell what you are pitching to them because right. it doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to sell what you're pitching to them. Yeah. Over here, we just have to sell it to ourselves. So we're just yeah. like, is this a good idea? Hmm, maybe. Let's go with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah. You guys are okay. I can already tell you guys are a really good team. I oh, say, oh, right? <laughs> yeah, we think we're a good team. Okay. We were very worried initially because you know you have this saying in Sri Lanka, not I think around the world as well. Don't mix friends and business, right? Mm -hmm. We are best friends. We thought of going to business. I think enough initial like first official unofficial meeting yeah. before this all started. We laid out the ground rules, like we're not gonna let this affect our friendship. We do oh, not yeah. want if it's going to affect our friendship, we're just gonna stop it yeah, completely. Because yeah. yeah. we didn't, right? yeah, exactly, and yeah. we didn't want that to happen. And so far, so good. Touch wood, <laughs> it touch gold. Yeah. It's being good so far. So yeah. yeah. As you know, the show is called The Founder, and I have to ask this question: If you ever got the opportunity to sit at dinner, for supposedly um, with the founder of your liking, who would it be, locally oh. or internationally? Oh, wow. Locally, international, that's a hard question. Locally, yeah. I think it's a no-brainer, Tara. Mm -hmm. I would love, <laughs> she's like built a brand from the back of her car to what she is right now. So I would love to pick her brain and also get to know more, her yeah. more. But um, internationally, oh, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe, uh, no, I actually I think it's just like locally Otara. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> if I can think. Of it, yeah, I think sure. actually locally there are many companies, mm -hmm. and I mean who have gone into multinationals um, or like a multinational level, or even very local mm -hmm. um, level. Uh, even in this sector, there are many companies who have started like from their garage and kind of built themselves up. So. I think there are many people that I would like to maybe have a full table. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, rather really than cool. just really just cool. one. Yeah, yeah. 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 just have, have like a inspiration you can. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Because yes, everyone's done so many things in their own particular field as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and Some, it's good. Yeah, exactly. And someone watching this would look at you guys and look for inspiration. Is there any kind of advice you could give uh, young entrepreneurs out there? You know, trying to start up their own thing, just like you guys did. Um, I would say just go for it and I had a lot of doubt even though I come from a business background um, and my family has a business as well but to start something in the craft sector again yeah. which again I had experience but I had so much doubts and that's where I went to uh, my best friend I was like hey can you help me like you know I how can we do this right. and thereby maybe partnering up with somebody yeah. um, if you're worried to do it on your own and in partnerships of course you know there will always be a doubt okay like will this work or will this not work but that's business you wouldn't know whether it will work or not um, unless you try it so exactly no I have the same thing if you're worried about something just do it like um, like the slogan goes <laughs> just do it but um, Another thing is I know when we come up with a lot of the times as entrepreneurs, as startups, when you come up with ideas and you share your ideas with your friends or like your family or close ones, you have a few naysayers because they are worried about you. Not because yeah. some of them could not be, but some of them, most of them are really worried about you and they'll be like, are you sure about this? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I think one of the things that I had with Isle of Rata, which I incorporated, both of us actually incorporated, is that we just spoke to each other about it. Yeah. We didn't speak to anyone else about it because we didn't want the negativity. Yeah. We were like, you know, we're going to get the negativity. We're going to start doubting ourselves. We're going to start doubting the idea. So we thought we'll just go for it. We'll think of, um, we'll put a plan into place on how we are going to uh, do this and we'll just do it. And here we are, like just doing it. I think I told my family like literally the day before we launched. Launched, yeah. The day before we yeah. launched, yeah. Same, and my friends also got annoyed like the day before we launched yeah. because, and that was just, that was it. And by that time, no one had to could say anything because it was too late. We were like, live. We were yeah. like, hey, it's launched. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell yes. everyone where they can find your products and uh, where you guys are. So you can find our products uh, online, of course, on Facebook and Instagram. I love Rata. That is I S L E of R A T W A on Instagram and Facebook. You can also find us at our three retail partnerships. We are we are at the Design Collective, New Mother Concept Store, and Beverly Street in Rajagiri and Bamlapitiya. 
Well, thank you so much, guys, yeah. for joining thank me you. today. And I wish you all the very best of luck. And hopefully, um, there won't be any other lockdown situations oh, or anything. Oh, hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> um, all the best, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Thank oh, you thank so you. much.